preparation is always going to be the most important thing. So you can never enter a negotiation. You can never enter a deposition. You can never enter any place where you're going to have to ask questions of another person or answer them without being completely prepared. Right? That's yeah. that's that's got to be the number one thing. And preparation has comes in different shapes and sizes. Preparation is we 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 could be unprepared and we're going to fail. But if we're prepared, then that's absolutely right. You, you can never lose when you're prepared. You, and you and I think that the the notion of being prepared for a non-lawyer might be a little bit different. I, that now that we're talking about it, the notion of preparation may be one of the fundamental things that we learn from being lawyers and practicing as lawyers. Is is lawyers successful? Lawyers effective? Lawyers over prepare, right? So something that that might be a minute, a minute's worth of performance, you might prepare for a week. Well, I always thought it was always fun. One of the things I miss about the practice of law is preparing a client for a deposition. And I mean, you always used to laugh because my preparation style, I think, was a little different than most, and in that I I always acted as if I was going to be the lawyer on the other side when I was going to prepare my client. The, the lawyer on the other side having a bad day yeah. you know, <laughs> and, and having the worst day of his life and wanting to take it out on the client. And I, I, would, I would tell the client, like, don't get offended. I'm not me right now. I am another person. I'm, I'm in character. Yeah, I'm in character. That's what I would always say. I'm in character. So don't <laughs> when, we, when we're done with this preparation, you might not like me for five minutes. Please try and erase that because I'm going to be as bad or worse than what you're going to see in your actual deposition. And a lot of times you and I would have fun with this because if I would get in character, yes. I would take it to an extreme. Yes. And I would have a, I would try and make it somewhat fun. And we have certain circumstances where it was extra fun. Yeah. But I think that that has translated a lot into our preparation for anything that we've done for difficult negotiations. Because if I'm going to, if I'm going to prepare you. For something. Yeah, I'm going to take an extreme role because the idea. Well, of course, is, it, you, you're over preparing as a lawyer, and you're and you're teaching the client to be over prepared. And what I always it, told, it's the same concept. And what I always told clients when they were preparing for a deposition is, if I do this to you, which is ultimately going to feel abusive, right? Because yeah, it, it should. If I am abusive to you in this preparation for this deposition, when you get into the real one, it's going to be a cakewalk. Because if I can be extreme and take you, take you down as hard as I can, that lawyer that's coming at you, if they're as good as I am, okay, you're going to feel it, but you will have at least experienced it one time. But if they're less than what I've been, then yeah. it will feel very, very easy. Yeah, when we would both be... <laughs> Uh, preparing the client together, and we wouldn't like you'd get into character, then I'd get into character, <laughs> and kind of see who could uh, who could take it for who could take it the furthest. Because well, yeah, because I mean, you, you know, you, you, we both seen each other in depositions where it was adversarial, and you know, I'm always prepared. That's a key, and the idea oftentimes would be like, how uncomfortable can I make this person feel? Because the more uncomfortable they feel, the more likely it is that they're a going to tell the truth. And it's going to be more difficult yeah. for them to hide behind anything untruthful, and they're going to be disarmed. And so the goal in any preparation that I did either for a deposition or even now if I'm preparing you or if I'm preparing Santiago or Joe for a meeting that they may have with a finance partner or somebody else is to try and throw as much at them as you possibly can so that when they get the real conversation, it seems easy. Yeah, I guess outside of maybe debate prep, Right, I think when, like a political candidate's going to debate, and they they go through weeks and weeks of debate prep. I I guess that's similar. It's the same. And in in the banking sector, regulators will stress test the bank. It's you know, or an engineer will stress test a structure with their CAD system or whatever it is. I, those are all similar um, concepts, I think. But in in the business world, in the legal world, which coalesce obviously. That, that sort of preparation, using those sorts of techniques, I think has given us an advantage. It's, it's given our, you know, the people who we work with an advantage, and we've, we've trained them that way. And it's, it's very interesting the way that that, that technique and that way of approaching um, preparation has, has helped us. But it, what's, what, what I always found interesting was when I would 
co-counsel with another lawyer, and I would be in a, a deposition preparation session, and I'd listen to them. Or when I used to work for another lawyer before I had my own practice. A lot of times, lawyers who are representing plaintiffs are nervous about going too far when they're, prepar- when they're preparing mm-hmm. their client. They're worried that they're going to offend them because they don't want to say the things that might get said during the deposition because this is supposed to be a relationship between these two mm-hmm. people. And if you say that stuff, it might well, make that person think negatively of you. Yeah, I always took the completely different approach. I always, and you see me do this, I always warned the person across the table from me that this is going to get ugly for a little while. And I am going to be really a different person than you know me as your lawyer. But if I don't do that, I'm not doing my job. And you, you, we've laughed about it. Yeah, well, it, it's, it gets it could be funny. It, but it, yeah, it character. is. But but at its core, it's it's it forces whatever whatever it is. It, it it can be an uncomfortable fact. It can be an embarrassing fact. It can be, or it can be a weakness in someone's argument or position. Right. I think that those are the common things that can come up in a deposition or in a negotiation or in a boardroom or whatever it is, or in a sales pitch. And I think that the process of, of becoming comfortable with a weakness and, say, you know, and, and learning how to reconcile a certain weakness in, a, in, in, let's say, a weakness in a financial statement or a weakness in, in, in your argument or a weakness in a point of view that you, it, it helps you learn what it is, it helps you reconcile that and learn how to defend it or support it or form a narrative around it. If there's something embarrassing or if there's something that's uncomfortable, well, you got you to get comfortable with that. And if it's embarrassing, you have to make peace with it. Yeah. It's interesting. I was watching, uh, I like to watch Howard Stern interviews, especially now. I think he's the best interviewer. Every once in a while, I'll watch one that's spectacular, and I make you watch it. Yeah. But he was talking about Jerry Springer. He, he was giving a tribute to Jerry Springer, who died recently. And this stuck out to me, and it's, it, it relates to what we're saying. Jerry Springer, in his young career, he was actually a politician. Yes, mayor of Cincinnati. He was the mayor of Cincinnati. Yeah. He, was, he, he was, I think, the youngest council member of Cincinnati. And um, his political re- career got derailed for a while because he had a marital infidelity, we'll call it. And on this Howard Stern tribute, he showed this old campaign video where after Jerry Springer was the mayor of Cincinnati, he, he ran for governor and he lost. But in this campaign clip, he said, he, he said, well, we're close to the end, but I've got to talk to you about something that I did that I'm not proud of. It's embarrassing. And he went through it and then he said, the next governor is going to have to deal with some uncomfortable things, and they have to be willing to to confront those things head on. And by me talking about my own uncomfortable things, I'm showing you that I can do it in a calm way and in a confident way. And that stuck with me. I was like, wow, that's a very like very effective and very compelling message. It's also a good way to flip the script on something bad that you've done. It is, but that that in and of itself is a technique. But I think it is. Going back to depot prep or pr- preparing for a debate, preparing for a, a sales pitch, a road show, whatever it is, that process of getting to the nerves, whatever they may be, and squeezing them, you have to do that. Because if you don't do that in advance and get used to that, then your opponent or your adversary or your counterparty or whomever it is will do it. You have to expect that they know where the nerves are or they'll find them. And they're going to squeeze them. And if you've never had that nerve squeezed before, oh, it's terrible. You're done. You no, know, you've made it. If you're a lawyer and you're and you're preparing your client for a deposition, and you don't hit on every uncomfortable aspect of what they may have to testify about, then you're not doing your client a service. You should get very uncomfortable. You know, yeah. When you're doing personal injury or medical malpractice cases, it, let's just say you know you have a, you're representing a husband and. The wife has a claim because of loss of support and services. That equals something, a lot having to do with sex. And I'll never forget the first time I was like 29 or 28 years old. I was a young lawyer and I had a couple that was being deposed. And the lawyer started asking if the injury affected their sexual relationship. And I was like, objection. I, how dare you ask such a question? And the lawyer looked at me like, what are you, an idiot? This is part of the claim. Yeah, there's, I can a, ask, there's a consortium I can, claim. I can yeah. ask whatever I want about their, yeah. their sex life. And if they're not prepared for it, well, that's your problem. That's your fault. 
And he was 100% correct. You know, I look like a moron. But I was thinking, I can't believe that this lawyer is going to ask these offensive... He actually asked questions like, what sexual positions can you not perform in? That's fairly common. I I was like blown away by these questions. But the truth is, they open themselves up to the claim and they got to answer the questions. And it's your job to prepare them in advance so they don't blush. I always told clients, so like, listen, I got to ask you some questions. Like, I may be like a 30-year-old kid asking like a bunch of 55 or 60 year old people about their sex life old enough to be my parents and this may feel really weird and uncomfortable but i got to do it because they're going to ask you these questions in the deposition oh. <laughs> and so it got it, it got to be like the normal part of the prep yeah. it was always i always had to warn them listen I, this i got to do this and it's, yeah. it's going to be a little tough but when you hear it for the first time in deposition and i haven't asked you about it beforehand you're going to look at me and say Justin, how could you have not told me they were going to ask those kinds of questions? Oh, man, we could have a whole podcast about that segment of depositions. And I can remember a few where some of the answers were, uh, <laughs> holy crap. I still, I, I don't want to talk about it now, but you know exactly what know. I'm talking about. I know. They I almost be, fell they, out of my chair. They could, they could shock you, but they shouldn't shock you because you should already know the answer before they ever step in the room. It's not always, it's not always what's said, it's the delivery. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. It could get it could get very uncomfortable. But but if I'm telling any lawyer out there, uh, young lawyers especially, when it comes to preparing clients for testimony, it's if you think that the question is a little inappropriate, or tough, or embarrassing, those are the ones that you should be focusing on because that other lawyer on the defense side doesn't give a damn about making your right. client feel bad. And, They're actually looking to make Of course. Feel bad. And I'll say for non-lawyers who are listening to this, hopefully they find this useful because just the simple act of, of, of sitting down with, if you're going into a meeting with somebody or a team or a, or a, a road show or a board meeting, whatever it is, the simple exercise of role-playing, it sounds kind of silly role-playing, but say, all right, I'm going to pretend to be, you know, the the guy on the other side who's going to start asking you questions about this presentation and let me try and make it as uncomfortable as possible. But like, oh, how about, you know, I see on this line item that this was way off. What, what, what happened there? And, and then you explain it be like, no, that, I don't buy that. That seems like a, a pretty flimsy response. That, that kind of uh, stress testing is extraordinarily important to go into something prepared and, and to perform at your absolute peak. And then there's one other thing I'll say before we conclude, because we're probably big on time right now for this podcast. It's the disarming of people in, in, in meetings. And I've really made it a point as we've gotten deeper into business to learn about the people that we're talking about before we talk to them. Well, lucky for you, it seems like everyone's from New Jersey. I know, I know. But See, I knew, so you're, you're <coughs> referencing something that I already knew. We're in a recent meeting, and the person that we were talking with happened to be from New Jersey, and that's where I'm from. I knew this in advance of the conversation, but I still asked the questions and wanted to learn a little bit about them personally, because before we ever discussed anything about business, we don't know these people. They don't know us. Why not talk about something that you have in common to disarm them, to not make them feel that they're in a defensive conversation, and make them feel comfortable? Because the moment they start talking about something that's comfortable to them, that you have in common with them, the conversation immediately changes. Mm -hmm. It's something I do in collection conversations. If I'm speaking with customers that are having difficulty paying debts, I go on the internet, I research them, I learn something about their business, I learn something about them, so that I'm not just calling them and saying, hey, why haven't you paid us? Let me learn a little bit about your restaurant or about your barber shop or about your wholesale business or maybe about where you're from or where you went to college that, who knows, maybe I went to the same place. That way you can sort of, well, you can personalize yeah. it with them and you can relate, well, become what, relatable. That's preparation. Right, it's all prep. That's part of preparation. And so it's all, everything comes back to it, it helps. never walking into a meeting without knowing who it is that you're gonna well, be meeting with. You know the flip side of that is, you don't say the wrong thing. Well, yeah, you got, especially nowadays, you gotta be super careful. You do. Yeah. Yeah, so I, that's that's no joke. You have to make sure don't say the wrong. I mean, you should you shouldn't say the wrong thing anyways. But this that advanced knowledge keeps you out of trouble. Well, that'll do it for this episode of Trials and Tribulations. Talking a little bit about preparation. Just so you know, we didn't prepare at all for this <laughs> discussion. We were totally unprepared, uh, but it still worked out okay. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for joining us. This episode was sponsored by Levelesque.